There is a living, dynamic, spiritual presence at work in the world, which is both within us and outside of us. Quakers use many names to describe this spiritual presence. Among the names we use are God and Spirit and the, the light, the inward light, the inner light, um, Christ, truth, love. There is that of God in everyone. This statement of belief is similar to the first statement. And uh, Quakers will talk about there being that of God in everyone, and it is a belief that the Creator has endowed each person with a measure of the divine essence. And that as a consequence, all of life is sacred and interconnected. Each person is capable of the direct and unmediated experience of God. Our belief leads us into a form of worship that does not rely on clergy or liturgy or creed. Rather, we come together in the silence. Um, we sometimes refer to our worship as waiting worship, waiting, uh, waiting um, to, li to hear, listen for the still small voice within and listening for that of God, the still small voice speaking to us. Our understanding and experience of God is nurtured and enlarged in community. When we come together in community, each of us brings our own manifestation of the divine energy. And uh, when we come together in community, um, we experience and embrace our diversity, we experience a much larger understanding and vision of, of, of God. The Bible is an important spiritual resource, and the life and teachings of Jesus are relevant for us today. For many of us, the Bible is an inspired record of uh, humankind's interaction with God through the ages. Quakers find that um, the, the, the truth and the teachings found in the Bible are um, an inspiration for daily living and also an inspiration for our worship together. The revelation of God's truth is continuing and ongoing. Quakers are very clear that the revelation of God's truth did not end with the writing of the Bible. We believe that God has continued to reveal God's truth and make God's will and God's energy, truth, known to humankind down through the ages, down to the present day. Quakers welcome truth from whatever source it may come. We find that our experience of worship and our experience of the divine is enriched by welcoming truth from different sources, uh, welcoming spiritual truth from different sources. Our inward experience of God transforms us and leads us into outward expressions of faithful living, witness, and action. Individually and collectively, we witness to God's presence in our lives by the way we live our lives and the way we model uh, God's truth in the world. One of the consequences of being of listening for the inward voice and being led into outward expressions uh, of, of faithful living and witness and action are Quaker testimonies. Testimonies that are well known today are testimonies of simplicity and peace and integrity, uh, community, equality and stewardship.
Modeling God's presence in our lives is more important than espousing beliefs. Quakers believe that the way we live our lives um, is um, of, of much more importance than what we say. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's an old Quaker expression, let your life speak. And that's very much a part of Quakerism. Uh, the, 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 the understanding that um, the, the way we, we model God's truth in our lives is to let our lives speak it. Oh, hi guys. No. Great Quaker oatmeal. I just want to welcome you to class today as we're learning about Quakers and the Quaker way. Let's begin with a quote by the guy who's right behind me, William Penn. Look not out, but within. Remember, it is a still voice that speaks to us in this day and that it is not to be heard in the noises and hurries of the mind, but it is distinctly understood in a retired frame. We're going to learn a little bit about the founder of the Quakers. His name, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you think you're even going to go to his college, George Fox. George Fox believed that all the other existing Christian churches at his time were an abomination, that God hated their rote forms of worship, which is why Quakers, rather than following any liturgies, rather than doing anything planned, historically sit in silence and wait for God to move them through the use of the inner light to speak truth and to minister all right, let's talk a little bit about not the guy behind me, but the founder of the Quaker Church, also called the Friends. George Fox was born in England and had searched for God throughout the various denominations that existed in England, including the Anglicans and the Catholics, as well as the Calvinists. And he determined that all of these types of worship were an abomination. He believed that the inner light was deeply within all human beings. He said that the inner light, the Holy Spirit within us, helps us to read and to understand scripture for what it actually means. He completely rejects all tradition. He said that it is the inner light that calls on us to pray and to speak. Otherwise, we should remain in silence, waiting for the Holy Spirit to move us to pray or to speak or to minister. Once again, all planned elements of the service was considered evil, and this is why traditional Quaker worship is completely silent. They also believe that baptism and communion and any other ritual in church was a creation of the church and was never to be done. And so Quakers neither baptize ever with water, nor do they ever take communion. They believe that this is making an idol out of an act like baptism or an act like eating bread and wine. They believe that any religious importance attached to the bread and the wine would be idolatry for you're worshiping the bread and the wine. And maybe they have something of a point there. If Jesus isn't actually in the bread and the wine, you probably shouldn't reverence it. Let's learn more about the Quakers as we look at this program about hymnody. We'll be looking at a hymn about listening to the still small voice. That I'm sure is the purpose of that Old Testament text about Elijah running from those seeking to kill him and hearing God's voice, not in the wind, not in the rain, not in the thunder, not in the lightning, but rather a still small voice. Yep, the inner light is my still small voice and is telling me to say, The first hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, was based on words taken from a poem by John Greenleaf Whittier, who was an American Quaker. 
Quaker meetings for worship are traditionally held in silence. Not something you'd imagine would appeal to your average teenager, who's more likely to be talking on a mobile phone or playing loud music in their bedroom. But the students at Bootham's, a Quaker school in York, are surprisingly quiet. We all go into the hall and everyone goes silent. It's quite interesting that we manage to get silent so quickly when we're all so loud normally. It's odd. It's not a silence that is enforced by teachers. It's a silence that just sort of happens. Everyone just stays completely silent and there's no one can going on their phones or texting in the background and no one can talking to each other or anything like that. We're all sitting facing each other. Uh, I think that's a visual um, symbol of sorts of how we are equal, how none of us is more valuable than the other. Even the headmaster sits facing towards the centre. When you're younger, you don't actually get a lot from it. It's just something you have to do. You sort of just sit there and you think, OK, well, I can last for 10 minutes. And then as you get older and you have more work and you've got more to do and life gets more stressful, it's sort of calming and a good opportunity for reflection, really. You can be praying well in the silence, but a lot of people do choose to sit and think about what is to come in the day. Be aware of the Spirit of God at work in ordinary activity. Anybody is free to speak, anybody at all, from Year 7 to as the oldest member of staff. If I move to speak and to minister, then I don't know what it is, and it's kind of indescribable, but it is like something that's kind of pushing you to minister. In our sorrows as well as our joys, are you open to new light from whatever source it may come? I think you're supposed to understand that there's that of God in everyone, and with the silence, you can kind of tap into that. It's not about someone telling you what to do, it's all about you and it's all about God and it's just kind of about connecting you to and you don't really need anyone in the middle to help you, you can just do it yourself through the silence. It's taken seven years for it to become enjoyable. Uh, being young today means often things are very transient. Clubbing and all these things and pop culture and everything sort of moves by very fast so it's nice, I think it balances it nicely. calms me quite a lot. It's a bit like meditating, where you don't think about anything. But when you're in a room full of people who are doing the same thing, it feels a lot more powerful. I am waiting for the inner light to move me to speech. The inner light is moving me to tell you about my beard. My wife told me no. My inner light told me grow. So grow this beard I did. Why I am not a Quaker, by Bertie Hustle. Why art thou not a Quaker? Said once my dimming light. Greater light spake, you shall not be a Quaker. Great gobs of buggery boots, said I. Why the devil not? Know thy source, my greater light spoke. For one is of constancy and one is of sand. Jolly good said my old friend the regular vicar, but what about the old words, the old books and the old ways? Thank gobs we will forget to remember. I refuse to forget, the good vicar said. Twas his children forgot, sadly, once he was dead. 
And now for something completely different. A joke. What do you get when you cross a Quaker and a Jehovah's Witness? Someone who knocks on your door and stands there for an hour, saying absolutely nothing.